federal government has received some advice from Afe Babalola, a senior lawyer and founder of Afe Babalola University, to reject the repeated or indefinite closure of Nigerian schools as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, he said mass closure of schools, especially universities without consideration for schools known to be outstanding in the possession of the best facilities capable of putting the virus at bay, was not good for intellectual growth and human capital development of the country. Now, this is coming at a time when COVID-19 cases in the country has surpassed 104,000. To discuss this um, uh, advice and how it should be taken, I'm being joined by Dr. Doi Odubanjo. He is of the um, Science um, Association here in Nigeria. I didn't get that correctly, but I will get it right. Thank you, Dr. Doing, for joining us. He's joining us from Lagos. I also am being joined by Ikechi Wogu. He's an education consultant. He's also an author and a writer. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll start with you, Dr. Doing. Um, when it comes to COVID-19, everybody obviously wants to support and listen and follow the science. Everybody wants to make sure that they're not making any mistakes because um, this is a, a virus that nobody has been used to. It's not like um, the, the normal viruses or the epidemics that we have faced over time. This is a totally different thing. Um, so in, in terms of opening schools or schools resuming at a set date, what should we be prioritizing? The science? or the fact that our education has suffered a setback because of this pandemic? Well, all, all of the above, I must say, because um, it's difficult to not say that education uh, can be left behind. You know, ultimately that would be like postponing the evil day. Actually, the evil day is here with us uh, because if you decide, number one, that you want to keep the schools closed, um, and then you uh, say on the basis of science, uh, there are challenges already. Even people trying to work at home with children around are complaining. Uh, but children also, you must understand that this is uh, all this uh, virtual learning is very inequitable. So there are not many students who can actually achieve this. Uh, even the so-called affluent ones attending affluent schools, many people can't actually get good learning done. And that means that in the present day, you are not achieving the maximum you can get for the parents and the child. Uh, and on the long run, as we tend to say, the children are the future. Uh, it then means that when we get to that future, what does the future hold for us? So you can't say that education is not important uh, and we can just do the science and say we're chasing the virus alone. Uh, this is a complex matter, you know, that is controlling the pandemic. Uh, it brings along with it several tentacles of problems you will have to tackle very carefully alongside. Interesting. Um, Ikechi, you are an educationist. You have a passion for education. You're one person who I know has been, um, you know, talking about why we should um, e elevate our level of education and make it better. Um, but Afeba Balola here does have a point, doesn't he? He's saying that we are making light of our education and um, that there are actually schools that can handle the virus and can, um, you know, make sure that the directives, the rules and the regulations are followed. They have made sure that their, their spaces in their classrooms, even the school environment, is COVID safe. So government does not necessarily have a right to give a blanket closure of all of these schools. Do you agree with him or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think preparation is the word. Um, how ready have the schools been? Um, apparently, from last year when the pandemic really hit us globally, we realized that some schools were already within their virtual learning environment. So it was a lot easier for them to lash on to the change and move on. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a clear cut standard that is um, achieved across board. So uh, the one thing the government should have worked to achieve is standardization, a situation where you have a minimum benchmark for operations um, from school to school. And that was lacking. So in the case of um, Afe Babalola, there's a high sense of preparation, probably post 
uh, pandemic um, 2020. Um, he had some sufficient infrastructure to make for the spacing and all that. But um, that is looking and judging things from um, his own um, spectacle. Mm -hmm. It is not exactly so everywhere else. It's not the same with the government institutions. Of course, you, you hear the debate every day as to the readiness of ASU to resume learning, okay, the fear of the pandemic and all that. That's because you, you and I would have gone through some public schools at some phase in our learning and you would see how crammed the classrooms are. There aren't enough, um, enough spaces for learning in the public institution. So government would be judging things from the public, from the standpoint of the public institutions, while there is the other side of the divide, which is the private institution. And even at the private level, the readiness is still not the same. So it comes back to government. It builds of government to begin to create standard uh, pedagogical platforms for proper assessment, for proper delivery, and especially at times like this, that tells in the face where we could say, okay, there's a minimum benchmark, and if this and this and this and this should be put in place as quickly as you can, then you should come in and, and, and begin and resume your, your studies. Um, by which means we're saying that, okay, some schools could be allowed to run, being that they have all the standards, all the parameters in place, and they can run. Other schools that do not have this and this and this as basics in place, should either quickly put them in place or otherwise uh, they will not be given room to learn. So it's just as simple as that. I, I just have a quick, quick follow-up follow question. Um, when you say that government should go into the schools and check, and you know how we are in this country, and it's not in any, I'm not in any way trying to make us look bad, but you understand how it is when you send a group of people to check certain things. We, we don't really um, expect that some people will just say be shut down because they didn't i mean you know what happens with the inspectors of education inspections in some places there are corners that are being caught how are we certain that the people who are allowed to continue to run have followed the set rules and guidelines without cutting corners because safety is the most thing that we're prioritizing right now and how are we certain that the teachers, where they're coming from, let's not forget the children and the teachers don't live in the same place. So where they're coming from, is it safe? And when they come in, are they safe? Before they leave, are they safe? How can we be sure, because of the country that we live in, that these set rules will be followed to the latter? If we must allow some schools to resume okay, and the so others we're looking yeah, we're looking at pre-visits and post-visits. So um, right at the gate, there's an entry point to every institution, okay? Are there, are there clearance checks? How do we check the temperatures of the children? Are there wash basins for quick hand washing? Um, are, are, we, are we made to, um, to verify that each child has his, his face shield, his nose masks, his hands are washed properly, he has his hands sanitized and all that. Those are basic checks that are carried out within the school environment. And um, the, the monitoring steps could be placed on the shoulders of the, the handlers of the institution. Okay, so the institutions want to remain open so that learning can take place. Now, well ahead of this, we're talking, of, we're talking about mature students probably. Maybe Alfred Babalola is looking at um at the tertiary institutions but we could cover the primary secondary and tertiary as well so at the tertiary level we ensure like we pointed out infrastructural um, availability there is enough learning environment otherwise the learning is um is skilled to such an extent that you could have them in uh, bits of um, accommodate of hand label standards. So you have 50 students per time, you have 100 students per time, depending on the size of the hall. So ratios are factored in. What's the, uh, the, the what was the UN standard? Okay, and then what is the standard now? Then when you get to um, well, it's not too much of the business of the learning institutions um, like Afe Babalola and others to begin to concern themselves with what the students were doing. I mean, these students and all of us 
have been uh, attending parties, we go to churches, we go to clubs and all that. So it's not the responsibility of, 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 responsibility of the school to determine what the, the, the life of the student was before he came into school. So it's our own responsibility rather to control what happens everywhere. So if you do that at the churches and at the mosques, you maintain that control adequately, you do that on the streets, and then you can do this on the, uh, at the schools as well. You discover that there's a linkage of controls and it is an intelligent way to save the day. Meanwhile, for the inspectorate division, um, I'm not sure that, yeah, it is easy to say that um, the work has not been followed through, but what is the rate of supervision? So it's like giving an instruction. Someone is engaged to do this at the Ministry of Education. Is he doing his job? If he's not doing his job, there's a leakage, there's a failure. Well, well, what question. is done? Well, that, that is the question I pose to you. But let me go to Dr. Doi now. Um, Doc, you are of the Academy of Sciences. And most importantly, what you push for, what you um, ask people to do is follow the guidelines that are put out every day. But we see people break these rules. We see people, and, and that's what I was trying to tell Ikechi, people are breaking these rules. People are having parties every day. Look at what happened on New Year's Day. People showed up in numbers at the beach. So how can we be certain that whether, you, I mean, you can come to school and try to do what the school says, but what happens when you're away from the school? Is this really safe? Is this risky? And if we say, okay, let everybody go back to school because the government has set a date, um, how can we control all of these children? You know how children can be, and you know how young people can be. It's not like we're asking elderly people to go back to classes. We're talking about young people who have a mind of their own. Right, thank you. So that, that speaks to even the earlier issue or question about Jafé Babalola's opinion. Uh, unfortunately, you can't quite guarantee uh, uniform behavior, you know, which is why you have all of the problems you have, and which is why in trying to control an epidemic or a pandemic, uh, you make rules that have to apply to all. Um, unfortunately, some people would be better behaved, more compliant than others, uh, but your weakest link is the guy or the lady that will not comply. And that's who you really worry about. And uh, so even when one school says we can meet up with the standards, the question is they are within a society. You know, so you have to deal with everybody equally, uh, knowing that some people are really good at doing what they're doing, but knowing also that there are some very bad ones. And there is always cross-pollination or there's always interaction between the good and the bad. So even in the environment where they say we have the standards, there, there will be an introduction of these things if the outside environment is not taken care of. Mm -hmm. So it, it's difficult. I was actually watching a report also on the UK and why the cases are rising still. And uh, people would assume that it's because people are not compliant or blah, blah. But there's lockdown, there's all of those things in there. Uh, and then shockingly, they discovered that the most important thing was the one nobody was doing, which is that if you actually are sick, if you feel sick at all with any of the symptoms, or even feel sick at all, you should isolate for 10 days. Mm -hmm. You know, And that is the actual rule that very few people are following. Mm -hmm. And that's why people keep getting infected. And that's unbelievable that people actually feel sick and they then refuse to isolate. So these are not people who are asymptomatic. These are people who are sick. But they refuse and they still decide, I must go around, I must do everything I'm doing. And that's what you will get. So if a student, for instance, feels sick, he's going to say to himself, I can't afford to miss the lectures. Uh, it's going to be too much to catch up, blah, blah, blah. Then he's just going to walk into the lecture room. Uh, again, if I take Panadol, my temperature might not be anything. So if you check it at the gate, I walk right through. So there are issues to be concerned about. And one of the biggest challenges with this kind of situation is that what it really takes to control it is what we know as behavioral change management. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most difficult things to achieve. That's why everybody is running for vaccines, running for drugs, running for uh, all kinds of things. But I, I mean, I keep telling them what you need is behavioral change management. You know it, but we know that it's hard work. Getting people to change their lifestyle, getting them to live differently is very hard work. Uh, and it takes quite a bit of time. And that's what we're not willing to pay attention to. All we know is very difficult. That's why we're not going that route. 
and we're looking for the shortcut of the drugs and, and even law enforcement, you know. <laughs> but law enforcement means if you are not there every time, everywhere, they are going to cut corners. Like you said earlier, they are going to do what they are not supposed to do. Uh, so it's it's really challenging. And I must say that, again, if you are thinking about should the schools open and all of that, um, the point is other places are open. So it makes it very difficult to justify even now well, why you should not open yeah. the schools. Because, yeah, well, the question would be, how come you left everything else open? You know, so the uh, we're, we're in a tight corner, Moss. It's complex, I, no easy answers. I Thank guess you. this is a debate that's going to be ongoing until the government decides whether they should open the schools or not. But I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Ikechi Wogu is uh, an education consultant. He joined us live from River State. And Dr. Donyo Udubanjo is of the Nigerian Academy of Sciences. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, you'll want to, we want to hear what the public has to say about this situation. And, of course, my take will come next. I don't think it's safe because of the fact that uh, the second wave is uh, getting stronger, and with the situation of the country now, if school isn't back, I don't think students, because of the fact that the school will be crowded and... I don't think the way the government would have created enough measures in terms of uh, how the students will be safe while in school. So I think the best thing is for the kids to be at home while they continue with their, what's it called, e-learning for those in secondary school and primary school. Then for those in tertiary institution, let them stay at home. Because even aside from Nigeria, other countries, they're on lockdown. So why go back to school? Why allow the kids to go back to school? It's no brainer. So I just feel they should just stay at home and when you save, they go back to school. I say if there is proper precaution at the school and there is a safety net, this thing, I think it's okay for them to resume. And there is a maybe this a one one meter distance. So I didn't see what is bad in it. I think it would be wise and it would be good for school to resume, but then we have to adhere strictly to the instructions and the guidelines given. If we can all obey that, then it's good to go because already the children are tired of staying at home. And the more they keep staying at home, the more the education, everything goes down. So in my own opinion, it's good for school to resume, but we need to adhere strictly to the guidelines. It's not a safe time for... Well, it's time for my take. Well, dear Governor Wike, four years now, and yet the people of River State are still inhaling this dangerous suit. When will they get some respite? I mean, you promised, you promised to lead, to serve and protect them. They're asking you to do just that. Find these air polluters and bring them to justice. No more bulk passing. Do right by your people. And today we face a deadly virus, a pandemic that's strange to humankind, and in fighting, to get back our normalcy, we must do all that we can to follow the, the rules, the guidelines, wash your hands, wear a mask, social distance, and protect yourself because the life you save might be yours. I am Mariana Cohn. It's been Plus Politics. Don't forget you can follow us on social media. The conversation continues on our Twitter and, of course, on our Facebook pages with the hashtag Plus Politics. Tell us what you think about all that we have been discussing and we would be glad to hear from you. Have a lovely evening. <music>